Well, Kennedy, who is not a candidate, uh, has 600 and some odd votes in our ballot so far. And so that puts him in the lead? Yes. And so the others would be get the acknowledgement that they are behind. And maybe this would tell about the future of the voting. Why do you feel that Senator Kennedy, even though he's not a candidate, is polling so high? I really couldn't say. I think that he must just be popular and kids want something else. The yeah. name association, of course. Beginning with that April date, the controversy in the newspaper was directed at a totally different program, the OEO program in that community, and the Regents nor the System Administration had concern. Neither of us had concern at that time over the OEO program. So this was a misleading uh, bit of information in the papers. The conversation between Dean Panel and myself about the Department of Internal Medicine and Physiology I did, of course, involve Dr. Kander, and that Dr. Panel pointed out to me that the consequence of splitting these departments would be Dr. Kander's leaving. That, that's great. Can we go for a ride? How fast will it go? Oh, I had it about 40, 45 miles an hour Sunday out on the road. Scare I you? No, uh, I didn't try to drive it too uh, fast because uh, uh, the old tires and stuff wasn't too good on it. And I haven't put new tires on it. Okay, let's go ahead and shut it off again. Well, Ford and General Motors and Chrysler and American Motors and everybody beating on your door? Uh, well, not hardly. Uh, this still can stand some improvement yet. Uh, uh, I have a great problem of it heating quite a bit there. Well, there you have it. This is a vegetable oil car. It was built right here in Louisville by Richard Clem. And uh, he may not be Henry Ford, but in his own way, he's a pace setter, and that's what America's all about. Malcolm Landis for Channel 8 News on the Move at Louisville. The convening of the Democratic Party convention was a long time coming. After two days of feverish activity, this super day dawned to find the Great Hall here at the Hemisphere Pavilion crowded with long lines of eager delegates. Their patience was to be sorely tried before they finally got inside to hear the music and the speeches and to get down to the final business of determining who will go to the national convention. To assure that only accredited delegates gained admission, each delegation chairman had to personally vouch for each of his delegates. At least that's the way it was supposed to work. Needless to say, because of that, tempers flared. Then it took an hour and a half longer than expected to take the straw vote. Finally, just before noon, the drum roll came, the flags were borne into the center, and the speech-making began, but the convention was not yet called to order. Every member of the Democratic Party has a right to disagree with me, with you, or with anyone else. And it is important we recognize that right. But we also have an obligation to work together toward an ultimate goal. And the best way of doing this is by adhering to the new rules. I believe that we must not only implement the rules themselves, we must implement, implement the spirit of these rules. And that simply means that we must, each of us, exercise the principle of fair play throughout this convention. 
Finally, at 1 o'clock, the convention could be formally called to order. The straw vote had finally been completed. All the delegates had entered the convention floor. About 30 minutes later, we were given these totals. They have not been certified yet, but they should be fairly close to accurate. 27 ballots were voided for one reason or other. Wallace got 1,270 votes. That's 33% of the vote here. McGovern got 1,061 votes, or 28%. Uncommitted, 846 votes. That's 22%. And Hubert Humphrey got 613 votes, or 16%. Again, I say that's unofficial, but it should be very close to accurate. I have just now come from the counting room. The business before the convention now, and it could be for quite some time, is now that the so-called expensive presidential preference is over, to determine exactly what the nature of the delegation will be when they go to the national convention. This is Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News on the Move, at the Democratic Convention in San Antonio. Even though it's not as spirited as the Democratic Convention in San Antonio, it's difficult to hold down your excitement at a political convention such as the Republican Convention in Galveston. Now, last time, it was probably the hottest game we've played all year, I mean, temperature-wise, and I was burnt out by the fifth inning, and I was throwing pretty well for a while, and then I got a little wild, and then they got a few hits, and I really don't remember the score, but I'm pretty sure it was uh, a loss on my part, and I'm just going to try and come back and win this game tomorrow. Okay, we had a great series against the Yankees, but we didn't do so well against Baltimore. Now, personally, does this put any more added pressure on you? Well, not not really, because every game starts nothing to nothing. I mean, we lose a few games, but then again, you see we come back and win five or six in a row. And, you know, we, we've got a young club, and it um, needs experience. You know, it's, it's shaky on days, and days that come back and beat Minnesota 16-2. to two. But I feel confident when I go out there because they play well behind me, and they always have, you know, we get a couple of runs and, and I try and hold them under one or two runs and everything turns out okay. These students are listening to the word of God spoken by one of their own, a student. A thousand of them fill the sanctuary of the First Methodist Church in Dallas today for the basic course in high school ministry. Before the week is out, inspired speakers from all over the nation will teach these young people and many thousand like them how to spread the words they learn here. Today, one of the speakers was Jim Kirkpatrick of Michigan State University, a two-year veteran on the staff of the Campus Crusade. But we get frustrated 
and we're up for a while and down, up and down. We say, this sure can't be the Christian life. You know, God must have something in mind that's different from this. And he does. He has the most exciting, fulfilling life for us. If we trust him, if we let his Holy Spirit fill, control, and empower our lives, and to let Christ live his life through us. The lectures, the discussions, the workshops, and the rallies will continue until Saturday, when for seven hours, the Woodall Rogers Freeway will be closed as an estimated quarter of a million people gather for one final gigantic rally before they return to their homes all across the United States of America, spreading the words they learned here at Explo 72. Jerry Park, Channel 8 News, on the move, the First Methodist Church in downtown Dallas.
The chair is now ready to give you the vote. Our vote at this time is Mrs. Johnson, 2,125. Roy Orr, 1,795. <laughs> Mrs. Johnson, will you please come forward? You delegates represent the voters who gave me an overwhelming mandate to lead our party now. Now, therefore, <clears throat> now, therefore, I'm asking you, I'm asking this convention to go on record supporting the right of the party's nominee for governor to name new state leadership. The first time I ever came to Texas was about 30 years ago, and the man that brought me here said, you can look further and see less than anywhere in the world. But if he would, if he would come back to Dallas tonight, he would see plenty. <laughs> 